turn a timid accountant who had been in an office for 10, 15 years, who was a nice sociable guy, into a raging lunatic. With two other inmates, Fred Widrashko is locked in a 12 foot by 9 foot cell at Strangeways Prison, Manchester, for 23 hours a day. He's serving nine months for driving while disqualified and assaulting a policeman. After the first two or three months, you're ready to have a go at any of these screws that are just sort of, and they're sort of all built up as well, because they say they're understaffed, they're overworked. So they're frustrated to start with. We're frustrated. Prisons in Britain are in crisis. In the last two years, Victorian conditions, overcrowding, allegations of mistreatment have brought riots and demonstrations at Walton, Gartry and Hull. Prison officers are protesting about their pay and conditions, and this week have started an overtime ban, stopping work supervision, welfare work and escort duty. Last November, the Home Secretary ordered an inquiry into the prison service. It won't report until June. Meanwhile, men are locked up day and night. Eight shop bits been closed and they used to show you a film, you know, sometime during week because they were, were shut all the time, but they don't do out now and just banged up all day. Banged up, locked up for 23 hours a day, Stephen Wood is serving nine months for burglary and theft. He and his cellmates can't work because staff shortages mean that there aren't enough officers available to guard them in workshops. You get your exercise, our exercise and that's it. So it's bound to get on your wick, you know, being, being banged up. Apart from 15 minutes to collect their three meals a day and one hour's exercise, these men are locked up round the clock. Tonight, World in Action follows one day in the life of the men behind today's prison crisis. Seven o'clock in the morning, prison officer Terry Bond arrives for work. The prisoners in cell 36, B4 landing, are getting up. Just after seven. Morning, George. Terry Bond works 12 days in 14. Average working week, 70 hours. Average take-home pay, 100 pounds. They're all up. Fred Widrashko is one of Officer Bond's prisoners on B-Block. I mean, the main problem is that the individual prisoners themselves slowly have the self-respect taken away from them, the pride's taken away from them, and everything else that a human being has. But I've analysed myself since I came in that Initially, first off, I didn't like anybody looking through the spiral, which normally, obviously, you wouldn't. You know, you, you want to you wanna have a piss, you want to go to the toilet somewhere. You don't want anybody watching you doing it. It's a private thing. But slowly, you get used to it. And after a while, I said to myself, how, you know, I don't mind people watching me sleeping and eating. And, you know, if you think about it, and getting undressed, and there's three people, complete strangers. Five past seven, Officer Bond counts the prisoners. When I come to work each morning, you feel a basic tiredness. You're also very frustrated in the sense that you know you're not going to be able to perform some of your functions for that day. Uh, because simply you, do, you don't know whether the job that you've been detailed to do will be allowed to carry on if the staff are not available for it. 61 on the falls. Have you any idea what's going to happen today? That's the trouble. I know exactly what's going to happen. This is the whole problem. You know exactly for sure what's going to happen the day after. A quarter past seven, the cells are unlocked. We're going to go out. We'll empty the, the slop, you know, uh, the remains of the so-called meal that we have um, into the recess. We'll go down. We'll get whatever breakfast they give us. Uh, we'll come back to the cell. I will be locked up all day, just as usual. 
Strangeways was built 100 years ago for 744 men. It now houses nearly twice that number. Each landing built for 40, now housing up to 100 men, has two urinals and two WCs. Each morning, after being locked in a cell from five the evening before, the men empty their chamber pots and slop buckets. Thirty-eight percent of the prison population, that's 17,000 men, are housed in local prisons like Strangeways. Nearly 5,000 are trebled up in their cells, another 10,000 are doubled up. Local boards of visitors, the public watchdogs appointed by the Home Secretary to supervise prison management, have protested at conditions to the government inquiry. They're joined by prison governors who urge the Home Secretary to launch the inquiry in the first place. Strangeways Governor Norman Brown. Why are you so worried about overcrowding? Because, it's a, I, because as a governor, I know it is entirely wrong that I am not doing the job I get paid for or the job I join the prison service for to treat people to be useful citizens. I can't do that, my staff can't do it. I think it's entirely wrong that I have to be responsible for locking men up 23 hours a day. That cell was designed for one man, but we denied prisoners their basic rights of their own cell. Three men in a cell means three beds, three tables, three chairs, and three chamber pots. Uh, as you can see now, at the moment, there's me and Jimmy sat at the table. Stephen has to sit on, on the bed to have his breakfast. At times we rotate round. We can have three tables in if we like, we can have three chairs in if we like, but it means that there's no even less room for us then, you know, you know to move about. Uh, making beds up in the morning, everybody's in each other's road. Well, everybody's known. Uh, everybody has their moods in the morning. I'm very moody in the morning. And uh, there's always arguments in the morning when you're making your beds up. Uh, washing facilities are almost nil. You know, you get three in a cell, you get 100 on a landing. Well, the same really. They're living in these conditions. We're working in them all the time. You know, as we open them up, it's not a very nice smell to open 50 cells in the morning after the three blobs have been sleeping in them all night. You know, we've got to stand and watch them at the recess, where there's only two recesses on the landing for the 100 blobs. We've got to stand in the middle of it. What do you think the prisoners themselves feel about that? I should... I, there's a little sign up behind you, you know, it says, uh, don't complain, you all volunteered. That's quite true, Every, everyone's a volunteer. The volunteers of strange ways include civil prisoners who've been unable to repay debts or maintenance orders, petty offenders doing seven days, short and medium term prisoners serving up to four years. The security wing can also house high risk, dangerous category A prisoners. Apart from the men here on the security wing or the punishment block, all prisoners are treated alike. 20 to nine, the prisoners on B block are unlocked for a day in the workshops. But for many, there is no work. Hey, boss, are we away from? Eight shots. Are you eight shots? Yeah. Eight shots on the arm, not exercise. Are we away from, though? No, no work. No work again. Hey, four. When we were filming, only three quarters of the prison was working. There weren't enough officers to supervise all the prisoners and guarantee security in the workshops. Today, prison officers have begun a national overtime ban in support of their pay claim. Only essential prison jobs like the kitchen work and admissions can be done. In normal circumstances, prisoners do simple, repetitive assembly work. What do you think of the work you're doing here? Well, it's just a waste of time to me. Kitty can do this. Just put this screw in all of us. The only thing is with this, it gets me out of my cell. But if I wasn't doing this, I'd be in the cell all the time. That'd be no good. That'd be worse than this. What would you rather be doing? Well, in the weaving shed or something like that. Something that I could lose myself in, you know, get busy with. Even without an overtime ban, workshops are closed because of staff shortages. The mailbag room is empty.
The weaving shed where prisoners make sheets for the prison service lies idle. After years of constant production, there's not enough demand to keep it going at full stretch. Even if all the shops were working at full capacity with full staff, the prison doesn't have enough work or workshop space to occupy all 1,600 men. I have a, 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 an unemployment field of about 200 men daily locked up in their cells 23 hours. What do you think you can do about those men that are locked up 23 hours a day? You can't do anything about them. All you can do is exercise them and, f and, exercise them and feed them. Do you think that's right? No, it isn't. It's completely wrong. Rule one of the prison rules lays down the purpose of imprisonment. The treatment and training of prisoners, it says, shall encourage and assist them to lead a good and useful life. Is Strangeway is doing its job, Governor Norman Brown. How does one start to encourage and assist in such a like, vastly overpopulated place as Strangeways is? Do you think you can treat and train here? No. We haven't got the staff, we haven't got the resources. As a local prison, Strangeways has to receive every prisoner sent by local courts. Our job here, fundamentally, we are a transit camp. My job here, and my staff job, is to allocate the men here to the best type of prison suited for that man's need. It may be a long-term prison because he's serving a long sentence, or it might be a training prison um, or an open prison. But we know, because of the conditions, because of the lack of vacancies, we know we are not fulfilling our task. We know that we go through the allocation procedure, but even though we are going through this allocation procedure, we know, and the prisoner knows, that it's very unlikely that he's going to get to a training prison because the training prisons are full. Local prisons, like Strangeways, are the bottleneck in the system. There are 300 men here waiting to go to the region's training prisons, Preston and Lancaster. Others should be transferred elsewhere. Is there any reason why you ought not go to Acklington prison? No, sir. Now, the waiting list for Acklington's quite a long one. If you haven't gone by January of 1980, we will be considering you for another prison in the northern region. Do you understand that, sir? Where are you working at the present time? Just been on the three shops. So you're in the training shop, are you? Well, you just carry on there. All right, thank you. Criminologists agree there's no evidence that treatment and training works. But the Home Office continues to defend its treatment programmes and keeps numbers down at training and long-term establishments. The pressure of overcrowding is bottled up in local prisons where men are serving short sentences. I can understand the point of view of a man at Strangeways who is trebled up when he looks around and says, uh, rather than sort of get done for a breathalyser or for stealing something, which didn't harm anyone, if I'd have killed someone, I could have been at a place like Gartree and watch colour television and be in a cell on my own and not be locked up 23 hours a day. It seems to us that the more sort of violent, the more evil a person is, the better treatment he gets. Now, if you look at Manchester prison, you've got people in the main who are doing very short sentences, comparatively and yet they're locked up three to a cell. Now, if they were really evil and were sent to a long-term prison, they would get all kinds of privileges, which the ordinary run of the mill, as it were, type doesn't get. Do and it seems it's back to front to me, really. Hey, oh, yeah, mate, two vests, two socks. Uh, there's no socks, by the way. What do you want, 10 shirts? While long-term prisoners elsewhere enjoy personal privileges, the conditions at Strangeways are primitive. There are no baths, merely 12 showers for 1,200 men. Prisoners are rationed to one shower a week. There's no television, one half-hour visit a month, no periods of association where men are allowed outside cells to meet others or talk to officers. There are two changes of clothes a week. What do you want? Sure. There is no socks to start off with. What size shoes? Fourteen. Fourteen. Why are there no socks? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't tell you. So what are uh, the I don't have to come up from the stores, you know what? So what are the men doing, going a week without well, a pair of socks? Uh, I don't know what else is going on. There's no socks? That's what I was just saying. No, there's no socks.
Midday, the men are unlocked to collect their lunch and take it back to their cells. Shortage of manpower, the officers say, means there's no time for rehabilitation or social work with the prisoners. Today's overtime ban makes this worse and must increase the tension between officers and prisoners. I don't talk to none the officers or nothing. They don't talk to me, they just don't body it. You. you just, as far as I'm saying, you just stay locked up until your release date comes along, then they let you out. It says that the purpose of prison is supposed to be training and rehabilitation. Do you feel rehabilitated here? There's no training whatsoever. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Nobody has ever said to me since the day I came into here, why have you done what you did? Are you going to do it again when you get out? All they've done is lock me up for 23 hours a day. How, in general, are our relationships with the officers? There's nil. And that's from my point of view, nil. There's no respect for them, and, and they just, you know, no matter how intelligent a guy is, he's just shit as far as they're concerned. He's, he's just somebody who's done something wrong, and he should always have his buttons, his jacket uh, uh, buttoned up, he should always have his hands out of his pockets, just like a, a, a little school kid. Can you understand the complaints of prisoners? Some of them, some of them you can understand. Some of them are groundless completely, but the majority of them are little things, things that wouldn't affect, well, they don't affect us at all. But they haven't had the letter, they, they've been knocked back on the letter. The visit's not due. Can I have a visit? The, my mum's ill, my dad's ill, my wife's not getting the social security. You know, and after yeah. a while, it's in, out, in, you get bombarded you, with it. You can understand the problems. Um, unfortunately, we're as frustrated as the prisoners. Probably because we know why the prisoners in that position have not been able to have what he should have. And it's no fault of ours, but we're the first line of attack that the prisoners got, if you like. Prison officers do at least 10 hours compulsory overtime on top of their basic 40-hour week. They can also be rostered for up to 20 hours more, which they must do unless they get a colleague to cover. My basic pay was 60, my overtime was 70. You didn't never get any time to, to be at home with your family. Uh, this week I did. I was working till nine o'clock uh, Saturday night, well Sunday night, uh, Tuesday night, and well Wednesday night. Right. This week, a low basic rate and excessive overtime of up to thirty hours a week is at the heart of the prison officer's grievance. What do you, as prison officers nowadays, think of the job you're doing? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> where, do you, where, do you, where do you get an answer for that one? It's a necessary job, uh, and some, some people may describe it as a necessary evil. Um, half the time I think the government thinks that. But, uh, it's a thankless job. It's a thankless job, yes. Definitely. Why did you go into it in the first place? Um, security. Mainly because of the security. Uh, the way work was won outside, unemployment, it's a secure job. It's a good job if you're prepared to put the hours in. You've got to put the hours in. The prison officer's action today means that they'll work only five hours overtime. All non-essential inmate labour will stop. All workshops will close. There'll be no laundry, no cleaning of the landings. People are tired of being locked up all, you know, 23 hours a day and it gets on the nerves. Sometimes they get that way, they feel like, you know, doing something. <laughs> Well, the only thing that stops them, I think, is them being put down the block. And the emissions hang on all the right. Take your emission off you. Well, no, they're emissions. So, like, you're doing two sentences in one. How do you mean? Just the carrot the dangling in front because of your nose. Because they've got that emission there, so if you do anything wrong, boom, your emission's gone. So, like, you're doing another sentence, aren't you? For so committing something wrong, like, you walk down onto the, the next landing where you're not allowed. You'd be nicked seven days, 14 days, your emission lost. Just for going on to the other landing. You don't want to do anything, you know, but um, a guy can only take so much. And these keep turning the pressure on and turning the pressure on, and you keep shunning it away, saying, no, I don't want any trouble. You can't hit out of them because you're going to lose more time. You're going to be down the block. And what goes on down that block is another thing, is another story again. Breaches of prison discipline, such as smoking outside the cell or moving on to another landing, can be punished with loss of remission. 
For more serious offences, prisoners are sent to the punishment block, a row of bare single cells. During the day, the bed is removed. Not all penal institutions have the standard of discipline that this one has. Some are, well, Fred, and how are you? Come here, sunshine. Let's see if we can sort out your problems. And what about here? Uh, the, the prisoner comes to this prison, he does as he's told. And if he doesn't, we want to know why. What, what, what is prison doing? It's keeping people, uh, it's protecting society from the sort of people that uh, we're locking up. And don't forget, we lock up a wide variety. It's mainly containment. Containment. We have no... Well, we have no incentive to put them on the straight and narrow. We're not given that opportunity to put them there. What do you mean? Well, to try and change his attitude. We're not given that type of incentive to put them on that track. You know? This we, prison's too large for that anyway. You have too many people. You have too much in a day to do. You know, we need we 15 hours. We... Yeah, hmm? we need at least 15 hours to work a day to get through the job. Free from city! Three o'clock, the daily intake from the city magistrate's court. Have you got an address? No, no fixed address. You've been committed to prison for one month on this committal and six months concurrent on this committal and six months consecutive on that committal, making a total sentence of 12 months. Do you agree? No, uh, uh, seven months. Seven months. I will query the warrant with the court. What is your job? Labour. Has any cash, Mr. Sutton? 63 pounds. You'll be fed. Within the next 10 minutes, you'll be given a meal. You will then be changed and put through the bath. OK? Go and sit down over there. You've been in before? Yeah. How many times? Uh, I would say I've known him over a period of the last 15 years. Must have been done somewhere in the region of 10 years in prison during that time. Did you get many people like that? Very, very many, yeah. How I many? would say good 65%. Of your intake? Of our, of our total intake. 65% of the daily intake are petty offenders, and a third of the prisoners are serving less than a year. Well, we receive many men in the local prison situation who we feel should not be in prison at all. We have the social inadequates, we have the catatonics, we have the spastics, the mentally disturbed. We have civil prisoners, and we have the alcoholics. And we say that this prison is no place for these people. Um, I suppose that to a great degree the prison service is responsible for our overcrowding because I think for far too long we have tolerated our, ourselves and we've accepted overcrowding, but I'm afraid now we are saying we can only go so far and no further. It's five, dinner time. The men are locked in their cell till morning. Yeah, been banged up since Monday. I don't think we'll be working tomorrow, so we're banged up again. What did you think about when you woke up this morning? Uh, did you really think about home, you know? And when I wake up, it's like, uh, like coming out of a dream, isn't it? You know, you think about home, thinking about home when you're asleep and when you wake up, it hits you, it hits you like a brick. You know, that's what I think about all the time, you know? Men do not come to prison for punishment, they come to prison as a punishment. And being locked away from their families, being contained, a visit once a month, very low rate of pay for work they do, most inhumane condition, inhuman conditions that they live in, this is punishment. But this is the wrong type of punishment that we want to give out in the prison service. What will you do tonight? We'll do tonight. Uh, most probably listen to the radio and then try and get to sleep, which will be very hard after sleeping all day. I was awake, but, well, 
half past five this morning. I, I got about an hour of sleep last night. That's where I'm having to sleep all day. With a rising crime rate, a daily increasing prison population and dissatisfied prison officers, the problems identified today can't go away unless the inquiry makes far-reaching recommendations. There are more than 42,000 men in prison in Britain today. That's past the point when the last Home Secretary said that conditions would be impossible.